Hello there! Today I'll be testing a number of ways of reducing silver from silver chloride. Easiest way of separating silver ions from a solution containing multiple different metals is by precipitating it as silver chloride. It is fast and very efficient because at 25 degrees Celsius only an extremely small amount of silver chloride can dissolve in water. But then, you have to process a large volume of silver chloride to get the silver from it. There are many ways of going about it. Today I'll test and compare some of them. Starting material is dry silver chloride. I had baked at 200 degrees Celsius. Because I know some of the methods I'll be testing have large losses, I will only use one gram of silver chloride at the time. It should be enough to show us how effective a method is while avoiding unnecessary wasting silver. First method I tested is thermal decomposition. Simply heat the thing with a map gas torch until it decomposes to metallic silver and chlorine gas. Side effect of the high temperature required to break the strong ionic bond between silver and chlorine is that the part of silver is vaporized and lost into the atmosphere. Thermal decomposition only yielded 69 milligrams of silver. This is 9% of the theoretical mass of 0 0.753 grams. Next method I attempted was a reduction of molten silver chloride with copper. Copper plate reduction yielded me 165 milligrams of silver. This is 21.9% of the theoretic mass. Well, some of it is still stuck at the plate. I am afraid I had vaporized the rest. I believe that my map gas torch might be the problem. 
its peak temperature is simply too high. Third and the last thermochemical method I tested was a reaction between silver chloride and sodium carbonate. I simply mix the two, transfer them onto a graphite mold and blast them with a map gas torch. Unexpected boon of using graphite plate is that I'm able to prove that silver is vaporizing because some of the vapor condensed on its surface. Smelting with sodium carbonate yielded me 175 grams of silver. It seems that, no matter the method, I'm vaporizing most of the metal. Thankfully, there are methods that do not require high temperature. Next method I tested was electrolysis of silver ammonia complex. I transferred the silver chloride into a beaker, added some distilled water, Slowly added ammonia until all of the silver chloride dissolved because of the formation of water soluble Da minus silver complex. I assembled an electrolysis cell by connecting two inert graphite electrodes to a lab power supply and slowly began to increase the voltage until I got a good current. At 8 volts the cell drew 0.05 amps. And I think we, uh, yes, we plated a bit of silver already. Focus it, damnable thing. It works. It'll only take uh, a, a lot more time. Silver crystals began to form on the cathode and they moved toward the anode. This could short the cell, but it didn't prove too much of a problem. Here you can see how close the cell was to shorting itself. After current fell to zero, I disassembled the cell Oh, here you can see uh, what the ammonia vapors have done to the exposed copper wire. That's some pretty colors, but uh, not the best practice because those crystals can fall into the solution and contaminate the product. Silver produced by electrolysis is uh, similar to silver 
made by cementation because uh, the, those two methods are similar. Only thing that differs is the source of the electrons. This uh, grayish goop are in truth very small cop, very small silver crystals. I dried the silver and melted it down with a flux that was one-to-one -one mixture of borax and sodium carbonate. Electrolysis yielded me 0 0.78 grams of silver, which is 83.8% of the theoretical mass. Last method for the day is sugar lye reduction. After mixing the silver chloride with a small volume of water, next step is an addition of strong base. I'll be using sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide will react with silver chloride to produce silver oxide and heat. Now that the chloride has been converted to silver oxide, it's time to add Reducing sugar. I'll use honey. Because it contains glucose and fructose. I can already smell honey being oxidized. It is rather pleasant, which is uh, quite a rarity, at least for me when I'm doing chemistry. After the end of the reaction, I filtered and melted down the powder. Lye and sugar method yielded me 0 0.84 grams of silver. This is 92% of the theoretical mass. Before we move to the end conclusions, I believe there is time for one ignoble mention. Silver termite. If you wish to vaporize 100% of your silver, you can mix silver oxide and aluminium. The reaction is not practical. I did it to celebrate the silver price reaching 1 euro per gram. So, what did I learn? Thermal decomposition is impractical. Thermochemical methods are better, but require a furnace or some other means of precise temperature control, otherwise they run into the same problem. Electrolysis and lime sugar are both very effective and comparable to each other. Losses happened while I was melting the silver. I guess the moral of the story is that I need to get myself an electric furnace. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe and see you next week.
And if you have any suggestions, please comment down below.